Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this new episode of Sotorial Talk. Today, I have the pleasure to receive you in a beautiful menswear shop in Marietta, Georgia, close to Atlanta, which name is Square Threads. I repeat, Threads, because my wife is insisting, because I'm just French, as you know, and my accent sometimes is quite difficult to understand. Square Threads. Threads, T-H-R-E-A-D-S. So, it's a beautiful place and uh, we are very grateful to the owner of this place to allow us to film in this beautiful environment. Today, I'm going to take you to England, or more precisely, to London, and even more precisely, to a very famous street for British and bespoke tailoring around the world, which is called, of course, Savile Row. So I'm taking you here because it's an important street, but also for a second reason. Uh, as you probably know, uh, I wrote in 2015 my first book called The Parisian Gentleman. Then I wrote in 2017 my second book called The Italian Gentleman. And since these two books were published, I have received, and I can say safely, a few hundreds Uh, uh, mails or YouTube comments or messages or message on our Instagram page asking me, Mr. Giacomi, uh, you did the Parisian gentleman, you did the Italian gentleman, why don't you write the British gentleman so that you can close the loop and have the trilogy of bespoke menswear in the world? And each time, uh, actually it's a good idea, but what I answer all the time is that the book Uh, that may have been called The British Gentleman, already exists. Because it has been written by my dear friend James Sherwood. But for those who possess my first book, The Parisian Gentleman, James Sherwood wrote uh, a foreword of my book, The Parisian Gentleman. So James Sherwood wrote Savile Row, The Master Tailors of British Bespoke. So it means that for me, I don't see the need for another book called The British Gentleman because James, first of all, is a friend. We have, by the way, the same publisher, Thames and Hudson, in London, and he did a fantastic work. He used to be called the guardian of Savile Row. This is the man who've been working on the archive, who've been um, uh, really trying to safeguard you know, the heritage of Savile Row. And he did a tremendous job. We can say he's a fashion historian now. He's probably, um, I think he's the living encyclopedia about Savile Row, about all the tailors of Savile Row, their archive, their clients, their history. So this is the reason why I didn't, for the moment, put into my planning a third book called The British Gentleman, because it's useless. This book already exists. So today I'm not going to tell you everything about several. What I'm going to take, I'm going to do some kind of a risky episode, because I'm going to share with you my personal, and I say my personal, favorite tailors, bespoke tailors, in Savile Row, and to be a little bit more precise, in London in general, because Savile Row is, of course, the, the very heart of bespoke tailoring in Great Britain. But there are also other tailors not far from Savile Row in London that are worth your attention. And I decided to share with you six names, which I consider among the most interesting, creative, progressive, but also traditional tailors in Savile Row and of Savile Row. So once again, Um, if some people are very, uh, that are very famous around the world are not included in this list, it doesn't mean there are bad tailors. There's a lot of fantastic tailors on Savile Row. It's my personal pick. It's my personal um, choice of tailors. It, uh, it, or to put it differently, if I had to choose to make five or six suits on Savile Row, where uh, uh, would me, Hugo Jacome, uh, go? If you want to go to the very bottom, to the very heart of British style, of British tailoring, you have to go to Henry Poole. Henry Poole is located 15 Savile Row. It has been established in 1806. Can you believe that? In 1806. This is a long time ago. And this house has been immediately famous. I think they set up on Savile Row in 1880, something like that. But they are famous and they've been very famous for uh, two things. First of all, their privileged relationship with the royal fa family of England. 
Um, if you go into the book uh, written by James, you will see the list of the clients. This is very impressive. These people have been working with the royal family of England since um, time, since, since a long, long time, but they have also a lot of um, immense, very influential people as clients. They are described sometimes as the inventor of the dinner jacket. Uh, to be more precise, all this happened in 1880 when uh, the Prince of Wales, who will soon become Edward VII, King of England, um, gave instruction to Henry Poole to craft for him uh, a specific dinner jacket. And this dinner jacket became, uh, for many, many people back in this year, the famous, the most famous dinner jacket in the world. And these people are really uh, mastering this art. You know that Formal suiting is not something that all the tailors can do. Every tailor will tell you, yes, we know how to do that. But for example, for a real smoking jacket, for a real um, tuxedo, as we say uh, in America, uh, for a real even more white tie, or for a real morning suit, uh, you have to go to some of these institutions. And uh, I don't say that Henry Poole does only formal wear. I just said that in this area, they are probably among the best uh, in the world. The style of Henry Poole for business suit is a British style, so it's kind of understated with a, a little padding, not too much. The, the shoulder is quite, um, is quite, it's very clean. So it's, a, it's, it's British tailoring. We're not in Italy, we're not in Naples where things can be a little bit more, you know, sloppy and more imprecise. No, here we're in England, things are precise, but the Henry Poole jacket is beautifully structured, but not too much with a light padding, clean shoulder, clean lines, it's beautiful. So if you're looking for the uh, epitome of business suit, or of course of dinner jacket, um, with the British understatement, there's nothing too extravagant, very discreet, but at the same time extremely elegant, I really invite you to pay a visit to my friends at Henry Poole. Simon Canet, I think, is the seventh generation of the family who founded Henry Poole. This is still a fully owned uh, family, uh, fully owned by the family. So this is very, it's a very um, distinctive and interesting place to be. Henry Poole, 15th Savile Now we'll move to the, to the next uh, person. But actually, we will move to a group of three people. And you will see why I choose those three people, because they all come from the same heritage. I'm speaking about Edward Sexton, Joe Morgan, and Michael Brown. All are coming from the same heritage, the heritage of the Tommy Nutter uh, in the 60s and 70s of Savile Row. Tommy Nutter was very famous. Tommy Nutter himself was not a tailor. But he brings some kind of fresh air in the conservatism of the British tailoring at the time. And he, we used to say, I don't know how, uh, I think he, we used to call him the wild child of Savile Row. This guy was dressing the Beatles, the Rolling Stones, all the important figures of the music industry, of the acting industry, uh, people famous all around the world. And Tommy Nutter was um, very, very um, well known for his instinct for his, uh, the way he was able to respect the craft, but um, while putting, putting a lot of salt on it and even some kind of, you know, some kind of um, 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 really new approach, very progressive uh, for the time. And guess what? The master cutter and tailor that was working with Tommy Nutter, actually I think they were partners even in the business, uh, is Edward Sexton. Edward Sexton had also under him a cutter that he trained and that with, with whom he's been working a lot is Joe Morgan. And Joe Morgan later will open his own boutique, his own shop called Chittleborough and Morgan and trained a young cutter called Michael Brown. So this is why I say to you that these three are from the same vein. Let's take a look now a little bit more precisely at Edward Sexton. Edward Sexton, uh, oddly enough, is not exactly on Savile Row. He is on Knightsbridge, which is uh, something like two miles from Savile Row. So it's in the same area in Mayfair in London. Uh, Sexton is, uh, well, 
uh, I don't like to use too much iconic or legend or this kind of words that have been a little bit overused these days, specifically in our trade. But if there's one man uh, in England who deserves to be called a legend in British tailoring, it's uh, without any doubt a Mr. Edward Sexton. Edward Sexton so started to work with uh, Tommy Nutter. I think he's in his 70s now, and he was famous for something that uh, that was very new back in the years. We can say that the Saxon style is, we can say, hyper-structured, or to say the least, super-structured. Everything is heavily padded, the shoulders are extremely designed, the chest is extremely high, extremely pinched, so it's almost architecture. Edward Saxon is a very, very interesting tailor for that, because uh, he put into his garment some, some kind of a, it's almost epic suits. You know, in France, back in the 1980s, we were speaking with Francesco Smalto, for example, of a power suit. But if you see, if you compare a power suit, beautiful, by the way, uh, with this V-shape, you know, strong shoulders and a very pinched waist. But if you compare a Smalto power suit with a suit from Edward Sexton, Wow, you will see the difference. With Sexton, we are almost in the world of, it's epic. It's, but at the same time, it's wide, it's romantic. It's, I think that it was among the first to, um, to really romanticize, I don't know if we can say this in English, the suit, to put the suit in a new glamorous atmosphere which is kind of um, strange for a British tailoring because you know that British tailoring is very famous around the world for to be understated. But Sexton really put some glamour into that. And he was also extremely famous for his woman uh, tailoring. He was among the first, if not the first, to properly dress women in suits. And that gave me the occasion to explain to you that nowadays there's a new movement. Uh, my wife, Sonia, has been one of the most important figures in that movement, but more and more women are coming back to tailored um, clothes. And some of the people are asking me uh, and or telling me, well, Mr. Jacome, why is your wife that, that what, does she, she doesn't dress like a woman? Oh, she, she dressed like a man. No, 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 sir. She dressed like a woman. It's not a woman wearing men's wear. It's a woman wearing tailored clothes which is totally different. Back in the years, it was quite usual for a businesswoman to have properly tailored clothes, and this is what we do. And Sexton, Edward Sexton, is a master at this art. Now he has a new team around him, the company is developing, and what I also like very much at Sexton, at Edward Sexton, is the big, it's, uh, that he's a very honest man. You know that these days, when you speak about bespoke or made to measure or ready to wear, some people have a tendency to uh, blurring the lines. You don't really know uh, if it's real bespoke made here in England or if it's, uh, you know, they take the measurement and they send your garments somewhere overseas. Uh, and so Edward Saxon is very clear on the subject. He has three different lines of clothing that you can access if you want to have access to these glamorous uh, garments. First, it's called the Knight's Bridge bespoke. That is to say the bespoke, measured, executed, fitted, done and delivered strictly in London. Of course, it's the most expensive of the three offers that Mr. Sexton have. The second one, it's called the overseas bespoke because uh, Edward Sexton was also among the first to understand that the new generation might be interested in his style, might be interested to have a suit cut and designed by him, but may not have uh, the wallet and uh, the means to afford this kind of high-level bespoke suit made inside England. So this is why he's offering, and he's very clear, and I like this approach, not trying to hide anything. It's called Overseas Bespoke by Edward Sexton. So everything is designed, cut in Knightbridge, in the atelier of Mr. Sexton by his team, and then is sent overseas to be crafted, and then comes back for the first fitting and second fitting, etc. So it's a let's say, advanced made to measure, and I've seen something made there, and it's quite convincing. And then, of course, he has ready to wear that he's developing. You know that Edward has been also very famous for his long point color shirts. So it's a whole universe. It's not only about jackets and suits. Saxton is a whole new glance, a whole new approach that since the 60s and 70s is really putting the salt into bespoke tailoring. And of course, we adore him, we respect him, and on top of that, he's a funny guy, super kind, and his, his wife is hilarious. So, Edward Sexton in London. 
Then we move to drum organ. And when we describe the style, the style of drum organ, of course, we are very close to the style of Edward Sexton. Why? Because drum organ was trained on the Sexton. They worked together for years. And, though, and when drum organ established his company called Schittelboro Organ, may not be the most famous name on Savile Row. Everybody knows Henderson and Shepherd that we like also, or Gibbs and Oaks, or um, R.D. Amis, or um, Dejan Skinner, or people like that, um, Davis and Son, uh, all these people are famous. And Shittleborough and Morgan are a little bit less. It's more for connoisseurs, or I would say people who want something with a kind of a spirit. And what Joe Morgan did is that he continued the heritage of Sexton by putting his own salt side. Can you imagine? Already, a Sexton suit is some kind of thing which is extremely you are. It's a declaration of style. It's a style statement. So Joe Morgan, that we uh, like a lot with Sonia, is such a sweet man. By the way, I think we were the one to connect Joe Morgan and Lorenzo Cifonelli. You know, in the world of the, this high level of bespoke tailor, they are not competitors really, they're friends. Even if they can have the same kind of clients, uh, they respect each other. And I remember Joe Morgan himself coming to me years ago, looking at my Cifonelli suit and s looking at the Le Pen and say, even here, Mr. Jacome, I think he called me Hugo at the time already, he said, we can't do this quality of stitching. Can you believe that? One of the most uh, respected tailors on Savile Row humbling himself in front of me, looking at a chiffonet jacket. This is why also we like these kind of people, because they are purists. But they, they know how to recognize when something is well done, even if it's not done by themselves. It's not the same story with Italian, but that's another story. So, Joe Morgan, uh, what did he do? He created his, um, his company called Chittleboro and Morgan. Why? Because he was working with a man called uh, Chittleboro. Um, I think that he retired, uh, I would say, five or six years ago. Ray Chittleboro retired. Yeah, I would say five years ago. And, and then Dromo got continued by himself with a team. And it's quite a successful. It may not be the most famous name. It may not be the, the name you Im immediately come to mind when you go on Savile Row. But believe me, this is a name to consider. So, Dromo Morgan. He has the heritage, of course, of Edward Sexton. Same kind of approach, something extremely architectural, extremely padded, with very, very defined shoulders. But he went, he's going even further in terms of lapel width, in terms of pinch weight. This is very dramatic suits. Immediately when you put on a suit, it's like an armory almost. You feel totally protected. That's one of my dreams uh, to make a suit with Joe Morgan one day if I have time to go to London for several fittings because I think uh, it's, it's something that if you are in this, um, um, I would say, um, uh, state of mind to really be able to pull off a style statement, I think Joe Morgan is one of the most interesting tailors, not only in Savero, but probably in the world, together with, uh, you know, some people, of course, in France, like Chiffonelli, in Italy, of course, and everywhere around the world. But in, honestly, having a, a suit by Joe Morgan is one of my personal dreams. I may, I may make it happen one of these days. So you remember Chittelboro and Morgan, fantastic, very padded, glamorous, and something also. His coats are cut long. You see, today we saw all these, these suits and jackets that are shorter and shorter and shorter and shorter. I don't know why, but they are, uh, at Chittelboro and Morgan, they are cutting, they are cut longer. So they give, to give them this very specific aspect. Now we move to Michael Brown. And you see, this is strange because there are three of six and they come from the same school, the same heritage, the same vision. Michael Brown uh, has been, I think he worked for uh, um, Morgan for more than six years uh, as a cutter. So everybody who's been to Morgan know Michael Brown. And Michael Brown, as it is, it is life, decided to set up his own shop, as Joe Morgan decided one day to quit Terminator and, and to uh, own his own shop. Uh, so he set up, I think, two or three years ago, not exactly on Savile Row, but I think it's less than a mile from Savile Row. It's on uh, Berkeley Square in London. 
I must say I'm very coherent in my choices. Because even if I would not know that Edward Sexton uh, have been training Joe Morgan, who has been training Michael Brown, even if I would not know that, I will definitely choose the three of them. Because there's something that, uh, that is the same kind of approach. Men's style, at this level, unless you just want to have a very conservative suit and you do it just because you need to have a suit and to be elegant and you have to be understated. But at one moment, you will see in your progression in men's style, you will see that you, uh, you will feel the need to express your personality. And my personality, if I go to England, will be the best expressed with these three people. So Michael Brown, of course, you can find some Sexton and some Morgan into a Michael Brown suit, but probably with a more uh, contemporary and modern approach. And when I say contemporary and modern approach, I mean that um, uh, uh, Michael Brown is, I, I don't know his age exactly, but he's very young. He might be in his 30s, late 30s, maybe early 40s. Sorry, Michael, if you're 29, but I'm, I'm sure you're not. But uh, maybe 30s, 40s. So he's a young tailor. He's the new generation. And believe me, what he's producing is absolutely breathtaking. One of his things is that he's one of the first to speak about couture. He doesn't speak about tailoring. For him, this is couture. Uh, for example, I'll give you an example of how far this man is pushing the style that he is promoting. Uh, an average suit on Savile Row will require, let's say, three fittings, maybe four fittings. I would say, yeah, three fittings is, is a good average. And Michael Browns prefer to do four, five, and sometimes even six fittings because he's totally obsessed with the architecture of his suit. So, this same kind of um, idiosyncrasies that you can find at Joe Morgan and Sexton, very structured, extremely designed, very close to the body. It's a style statement. If you want to remain discreet, don't buy a Michael Brown suit. If you want to step out of the crowd and you are ready to pull off something which is really, really distinctive, Michael Brown is for me one of the best tailors of the new generation, generation of English tailors. The fifth tailor that I appreciate particularly uh, on Savile Row is located in a very, very, very prestigious and well-known company called Gives and Oaks, uh, which is located at number one Savile Row. I speak about Davide Taub. Uh, if I'm not wrong, Davide Taub has been trained at Maurice Sedwell. Maurice Sedwell is um, the store which is at the opposite of Savile Row, that is to say, if you go uh, first Savile Row, you have given Oaks, and I don't know the number of Maurice Sedwell, but at the very end, the last tailoring shop on Savile Row is Maurice Sedwell shop. So, uh, after f four or five years, I think, of uh, training and working as the head of Bespoke at Maurice Sedwell, uh, David Tob uh, decided to, to move to the other end of the street. Well, it's so small that you can do it on foot and to take over uh, the atelier, the bespoke atelier of Given Oaks on Savile Row. Since three or four years with uh, my wife Sonia, we uh, follow very closely, although we don't know him, we never met David Taub, but we are following very closely his work on Instagram, on his blog, and the less we can say is that this man is a very creative tailor, but also I would even say a very progressive tailor. He is crafting some jackets, some um, suits that are really different. Uh, I, I invite you warmly to look at his Instagram page, for example, David the Taub, uh, and you will see something that you've never seen uh, anywhere else. He's taking risks with the figure of styles. Um, he's, he's, uh, he's working with um, something a little bit lighter. The three um, former tailors I was speaking about, Sexton and, and um, Joe Morgan and Michael Brown, uh, all of them are working on very padded like an armory suit, you know, when you have one of these suits, you really feel, you know, protected. Taub um, is very progressive. Uh, is, it's a stylistic statement also. As you can see, I didn't 
pick up people who are very traditional, except Henry Poole, who is for me the roots of Savile Row. But um, all the others that I decided to choose for this episode were some kind of um, people who were taking the bespoke turning and making progress. And David Utobi is part of these people. It can have some extremely designed and extremely structured um, uh, suits with pagoda shoulders, with high roped shoulders, something that I like. Not everybody like that, but, but he can do this very well. He can also do something more casual, something more extravagant. This guy is actually a very, very talented tailor. One thing about him that is different from um, Sexton, Morgan or Brown is that he's, um, he's very concerned with the lightness of what he's, um, he's crafting. So that even if you have a suit by him with very structured shoulder, it remains light. I don't know where it comes because I don't know if, honestly, we don't know him. So Davide sounds very Italian in my ear. So maybe it's, he has some roots on his blood, there's some kind of Italian take. But what I know is that he often say that he likes to be stylish, of course, but never to the expense of comfort. And this is something which is very precise at Davide Top. He likes style, but together with comfort. Anyhow, this is a very interesting tailor, David Taub at Given Oaks, one Savile Row in London. And I will finish this tour of Savile Row and London with a company that I still call a young company, but they may not be so young anymore. I tell you why. I th um, it's Tom Sweeney. Tom Sweeney, uh, I think I visited them in 2009 or 2010 uh, because I was writing a report on London and on London tailoring for Parisian gentlemen and for a magazine, a French magazine called Dandy magazine. And so uh, I, had, I selected a few tailors and Tom Sweeney, uh, my friend John Sherwood, said to me, you should go to see those two young men because they just opened their shop. So I believe I was among the first to speak about Tom Sweeney uh, 10 years ago, a little bit, yeah, I think it's 10 years ago. So now it's a company who has been developing extremely well. It has been created, uh, Tom Sweeney, it's a mix between two names, Tom Widdett and Luke Sweeney. Tom Widdett was a cutter uh, at uh, Timothy Everest, another tailor, which is uh, in, uh, his atelier is in Spitzersfield. And, um, and Luke Sweeney was also working at Timothy of Rest, but he was in charge of the make-to-measure operation. And those two young men, they were <coughs> in their late 20s, early 30s when I met them, decided to open their shop together. And it was a great success. Why? Because they created some kind of um, um, contemporary and modern approach of tailoring. It's a little bit like Sexton but um, in a more softer way. If you go to Tom Sweeney, you can have access to bespoke, you can have access to a made-to-measure, or you can even have access to ready-to-wear. So they cover the integrality, the whole spectrum of uh, the menswear industry. And what I find very impressive and interesting at Tom Sweeney is that whether you go bespoke or MTM or ready-to-wear, you have some kind of a same feeling of style. So they managed to really create a style on their own, which you can find on Bespoke, on MTM, and on Ready to Wear. And it's not always the case. I know so many tailors who wanted to move to Ready to Wear, and most of the time, I must say, they are losing a little bit their soul or their, their style. Uh, I know, on the contrary, some Ready to Wear wanted to open a Bespoke operation, and that was not very successful also in terms, I'm not, I'm, I'm not speaking here about business, I'm speaking more about how do you preserve your style. The fact that this young uh, company started 10 years ago was immediately a double or triple, a double offer, immediately bespoke and made to measure, uh, uh, made it uh, possible to have a Korean style along all the lines. I really like them. Uh, the style is super clean, uh, super contemporary, but extremely clean. You can be very classic. I know they do so nice work also on dinner jacket and uh, formal garments. Uh, so it's a beautiful place. I'm, I think now they have two boutiques in London and, and one in New York, if I'm right, and there are 
that has stockists around the world who are distributing their brown for ready to wear. It's called Tom Sweeney. I really like these people. I really like this brown because it's for me, it encapsulates uh, what contemporary uh, British style should be. So this was my choice, my take. Once again, I'm sorry if you didn't hear about your favorite tailor. Uh, we also like Given Oaks and Anderson and Shepard and Dejan Skinner. We have so many friends, and Richard Anderson, of course, on Savile Row. All these people are doing a great job. They are very respectable. But I decided to pick up if I, Hugo Jacome, had to go to Savile Row or to London to have a few suits made, where should I go? You had the answer. Thank you for following us. Thank you for commenting. Thank you for being so loyal since the beginning of Sotoyal Talks. And I give you an appointment for the next episode of our Sotoyal Talks. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs>